Hello, this is Jason Heiner with ZDNet, and today I've got a very special guest, Gary Shapiro of the Consumer Technology Association, which of course runs CES. Gary, thanks for being here. Thanks, Jason. If I had known you'd be wearing that cool hat, I would have put mine on and covered my <laughs> follically challenged head. <laughs> <laughs> That's my strategy, exactly. So, uh, so Gary, we're, we're arguably on the eve, of course, of the biggest week of the year in tech, and you and your team you know, work and prepare all year for this. So let's put you on the spot right away and like ask what's the most important innovation that CES 2019 is gonna be remembered for? Probably artificial intelligence. AI is definitely one of the ingredient technologies that will be pervasive throughout the show. We have a separate dedicated portion to it, but so many companies have so many things and it's really affects so many areas. Um, and a lot of the keynoters will be talking about it. We certainly expect uh, Ginny Romney of IBM to be talking about it. Uh, Lisa So of um, AMD as well. Uh, the chip company. Um, and, and we could see in other areas that along with 5g where we'll have uh, at t and Verizon's top people uh, on the keynote stage talking about it. Um, yeah. 5G is clearly the future. Every 10 years, there's a new G. You know, 4G was 2010, and uh, 3G was was 2000. So it's um, that'll allow so many great things to happen. So you you have the transmission, and you have the guts of it. And then there's like things like that are just cool, like robotics, which will you know I think will be its part. Of CES increasingly for the next 20, 30, 40 years. I'd love to see it. Uh, and AR, VR is still very strong. Uh, part of related to a lot of these things, including artificial intelligence, is self driving cars. Um, yeah. We expect a, a large group of car, car manufacturers. And if, um, well, if the government uh, could get open, we'll have a whole, the Secretary of Transportation and a lot of people from Washington come looking at a lot of these technologies. Um, as we speak here, before, as you say, the eve, uh, that's a big question mark, um, having dealt with a lot of official Washington today, uh, it doesn't look very promising. So, uh, CES, so yes, other than a government participation uh, from the U.S., anyhow, uh, will be strong. We'll have strong support from the rest of the world. Well, about one-third of the people that come are from outside the United States, and a lot of uh, major government officials, cabinet ministers are coming from around the world. So, so Gary, the the scope of CES continues to expand, right? Like it's known, of course, the headlines, TVs still make the headlines. Um, so much of the uh, mobile technology and, and accessories, things that feed into the mobile ecosystem still make um, headlines. But um, just in the last five years alone, um, it's uh, spread into so many new areas, health, smart home, um, and other areas. T talk a little bit about that. And are there new um, areas? What are some of the newest, most exciting areas that CS is expanding um, into this year? Well, you're right about a lot of things there, uh, just to unpack them. First, yes, this is our biggest ever. We uh, just figured out we hit 2.9 million net square feet of exhibit space, 4,400 exhibitors. That's a lot bigger than last year. We were about 2.75, um, which was much, we, had, we found extra space. Uh, we fill about everything we can. We're waiting for further expansion in Las Vegas. But TVs are still a big part. In fact, 8K is going to be one of the talks of the floor. We expect a lot of companies to show 8K. It's really huge. We're working on making sure that uh, we're active in that area and have a definition so everyone knows what we're talking about, as we've done in other technologies like HDTV and other areas. So when someone sells something to the consumer, the under, consumer understands what that means with certain basic uh, technical requirements. Uh, but there, there are other uh, cool areas that are, in a sense, new or growing. Um, resilience is something we're talking about a lot. Uh, we did have the power go out last year during CES, and we had a board meeting in the middle of the uh, Napa Valley fire without electricity, uh, telecommunications, or coffee, and it got us thinking about resilience and the importance of our products and the roles they can play. Healthcare, digital health is absolutely huge in terms of uh, solving the problems of healthcare around the world. That's something where uh, I think the world was heading in a very positive direction on to, so we could get cures for things that basically fix things that are specific to our illness, our demographics, things like that. Um, so there's, there's a lot going on there in different areas, the whole mobility area. Um, certainly it's self-driving, it's electric scooters, it's electric. Um, it, there's more and more transportation people that come. We have a whole area of the show called C-Space, which uh, doesn't get a lot of discussion, but it checks like 
tens of thousands of chief marketing officers and content creators from around the world from all sorts of industries. Because one thing has changed, and I talk about this a lot in my book, is that um, being a vertical in an industry and just being specific to an industry is not a winning success formula anymore. You have to jump across industries, jump across knowledge bases, jump across cultures and languages. So you can do business, you could extend your brand, you could take the best from other people, you know, to be one thing for everything. That's why small companies are there in force. Uh, we'll have 1200 companies in Eureka Park. That's up about 20%. Um, big companies want that. They're starting to partner with small companies. They realize they can't invent everything. Uh, so they'll invest, they'll be the first customer. They love Eureka Park. They'll send their whole teams there. And the small companies are, you know, that's an area of the show you just can't get in. A lot of people want to get in, but it is, it is definitely, uh, we, we're carefully screened who is in there. So the, all those things convene in Las Vegas and you get the value of serendipity, the discovery, the joy of finding something you didn't know in a five sense experience where you're getting to see, feel, touch, hear, evaluate not only products, but people. Um, and you discover things you haven't discovered before and across your different areas. And that's what the show is about. It's about the joy of innovation, the future of innovation, the optimism that combines with the beginning of the year of January with the fact that here are some fundamental solutions to big problems we face as humans, whether it's in healthcare or agriculture. And that's, you see that in the drones and the robots, you see that in so many areas. So in terms of uh, what we'll see in Vegas, you'll see something you didn't expect to see. And I promise you that, especially if you can walk the floor. Excellent. So you mentioned your book as well. So let's talk a little bit about oh, that. Did I? <laughs> it was an accident. Your, your book just came out this week, actually. So you're also, you're the author of multiple books, but the, uh, the previous one was Ninja Innovation, the 10 Killer Strategies of the Most Successful Business, of the World's Most Successful Businesses. Um, and now Ninja Future is the new one that just came out this week. So my question is, why Ninja in this context that we're talking about innovation and innovators? Well, ninjas were ancient Japanese uh, warriors who won against great odds by being super flexible, smart. They'd plan ahead, they'd prepare, but they knew when they hit the battlefield, things would change so they would adjust quickly. It's the same thing that's required in today's competitive marketplace with changing technology, with intense competition. You have to be quick. I, and I talk about the technologies, but I also talk about the strategies. For example, I say, don't create a, you know, a five-year plan. Don't create a strategic plan. Don't create, uh, do all these things as a startup that you're supposed to do according to a lot of bankers and financiers. Basically, get your idea, your product out there, test it with your potential customers, and adjust along the way. And I talk about our own experience. Our five-year plan here is a page and a half. It took us you know, a, a day's retreat to come up with, and we've changed along the way, but it's changed us dramatically, um, and it's allowed us to go into new areas without all the specifics and boredom and tedium and silly tactics that are irrelevant within two months that go into long-term planning. So there's a lot of things like that and how you deal with people, how you discover things, how you go over verticals in the context of new technologies. And it's aimed at entrepreneurs, it's aimed at executives, and also frankly even governments who all want to emulate Silicon Valley and say, don't emulate them. You're not Silicon Valley. Figure out what it is you have that's special and work off of that. Know your weaknesses. And it goes into a lot of uh, real personal advice, human advice, as well as business and technology advice. And, and that's what it's aimed at. The Ninja title is, um, it, it works. The publisher loves it. I, and I, you know, you do what the publisher wants. I love it too. It's kind of, it's, it makes my kids think I'm cool. Nice. So talk a little bit about the difference between the two books, uh, Gary, you know, your last yeah. one and the new one. So that's, that's a great question. So the, the last one, um, Ninja Innovation was really focused on secrets to success from the world's leading uh, companies. Uh, a lot of these tech companies, I've gotten to know them through CES and their CEOs, and I've observed and I formed my own conclusions, and I tied that into the, the Ninja tactics. Uh, Nin Ninja Future is, is, is stepping on that and saying, here, those are the successful things that big companies do. Here's some other things you can and should be doing. Here's the technologies you have to know about. I use the old uh, Rumsfeld two by two uh, matrix to talk about there's things we know that are going to happen. We're certain of them. We know we're going to get to robotics and drones and artificial intelligence and probably quantum computing. Here are the things we don't know, uh, but could happen. Here are the things we, um, we don't know that we don't even know. Uh, and those are the things I can't even talk about because I don't know them either. But I mean, I've been pretty good for the last 30 years at figuring out which technology is going to take off and decrying those that don't. I mean, I was really down on 3D uh, television um, 
Me too. I had to offer to resign on that basis. <laughs> Luckily, my board didn't accept my resignation. And, and, but other technologies like HGTV and 4K, I was about as excited as could be. Um, you know, I, I was really high on drones and I'm big on robotics still. Artificial intelligence to me solves a lot of the world's problems. So these are the things I talk about, where they're going, how you partner, what you do. Um, I'll be wrong, but I'll also be uh, right, I think, more than I'm wrong. So I, I just want to share my passion, my enthusiasm, my knowledge, and the life tricks I've learned. Um, you know, like I talk about personal things like my mother having Alzheimer's and how facial recognition technology can really help people with Alzheimer's. And it's a shame, like, we're killing it. And I talk about the tension between that and concerns about privacy, which we're facing issues of privacy and jobs and things like that. So I cover a whole range of areas that are very current and hot, but more focused on the next several years to get us to the future that I think we all want to go to, that technology is really good if we play it right. And here's the things we should do as a society. Here's the things you could do as individuals, companies, and governments. It's good. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Uh, I got I got to look at one of the early copies. And of course, I care about the topic. As you and I talked before the show, I, I did my own book, uh, Follow the Geeks on Innovators. So it's, right. a, it's, a, it's a great topic. There's one bit in it that I wanted to ask you about. There's a lot of things in there. So last question. There's a section in there called Spend Less, No More. And that so flies in the face of what we think about with the tech industry and even consumer spending and all of that, which is like more is more, right? And so could you talk a little bit about this concept, you know, of spend less, no more? Uh, help me with it. Now, look, yeah, I've, so, I've written a book. I did the audible version and I need a little <laughs> more flesh on that. Yeah, yeah. So what you're talking about is, um, it, you know, consumers are getting more and more um, intelligent about the ways that they approach the industry. And so, you know, as a um, marketer or obviously in the business I'm in, information business, you know, we have to give them more information, more concisely. We have to help them be better informed consumers and consumers, of course, themselves. So companies and by extension media, you know, businesses have to better inform consumers if they want to win them over because um, if they don't, somebody else will. Right. I mean, it's, if, it's a hyper competitive world that we're in now where consumers are fingertips away, uh, you know, f on their phone or their, their uh, tablet from figuring out what it is they want. And so what business are you in? It's what every business has to ask themselves. Are you in a knowledge business, the expert business, the service business? Are you in a quick response business? You have to know what your unique selling proposition is, your competitive strength. And then you play off that and you could outsource almost everything else and you figure out how you outsource that. Uh, which is why I talk about outsourcing. I would include in that partnering okay. um, where you, you play off someone else's knowledge and they play off yours or off your brands, frankly, to reach consumers, which is happening all the time. I mean, there's so many examples of that I was just reading about how Delta is doing well because they're with American Express because they are um, – the people want the Delta credit card, the, the American Express credit card seems less important. And they're making a lot of money on that because they are both playing off each other's brands. But that happens all the time with any major brand. So it, it does require partnering. And you just can't fool consumers in a sense. You have to be honest, transparent, find your voice, know your marketing position, and give it to them. It's just like I, I do in my job what I kind of do in life, which is try to be as honest as possible. And that way I don't have to waste a lot of brain power figuring out all the deceits and who I told what to and what I just pretty much say the same thing to people. I say the same thing to journalists that I say that, that I say to my kids. I mean, it's just like there's not I don't have a lot of secrets. Um, frankly, which good. makes my life a little less complicated. It's good life advice for business and uh, just being a, a, a human being navigating this world. <laughs> right. Very good. All right, Gary Shapiro, thanks so much for your time. We look forward to seeing you in Las Vegas next week at CES. Safe travels. Enjoy CES and have a great 2019.